Our Week 10 cash game lineup on DraftKings did great, scoring a whopping 183 points. We'll debrief all about it and get you ready for Week 11 with our cash and GPP lineups all coming up next. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee. And I am the fantasy football consultant. Singular. Oh, this is weird. Uh, for the first time ever, we're just, I'm the only one in the studio. One of the, there's a lot of channels uh, out there that does DFS. And one of the things that I really like about our channel, some others do it as well, is that we have a two person team so we can play off each other and give you different perspectives. Um, so Gary is not available this week. And just so you let you know, Gary is physically fine. Um, he just is dealing with a very serious situation right now, but he has assured me and he wanted me to assure you guys as soon as he is able, he will be back in that chair and giving me a hard time. So um, we all look forward to that. Unfortunately, John and Michael are both out of town, two guys who, are, who have been willing to sit in for Gary and, uh, until he returns. So you guys just got me this week. So let's talk a little bit about uh, our week 10 lineup. Uh, Lamar Jackson was incredible. 33 points. The two Christians, Kirk and McCaffrey, were outstanding. 70 combined uh, total DK points. Pittsburgh, our late ad, 25 points. That defense is just incredible. And DJ Moore came through for 24 points. On the dud side, for full disclosure, uh, a late ad was AJ Brown. We got the game script right with Pat Mahomes playing. We thought um, Kansas City was going to score a lot of points, which required Tennessee to score a lot, but they just stuck with Derrick Henry on the ground and the defense got a touchdown and A.J. Brown just didn't work out. Uh, neither did Jalen Samuels or David Montgomery, even though they were nice value plays of uh, the lead back for their team, they just didn't perform. Um, but overall, very happy with our Week 10 uh, cash lineup. Now, I want to remind everybody that we film uh, and give you our lineups on Wednesday. But from Wednesday to Sunday, a lot of news happens. A lot of injuries may pop up uh, for clarity. So you guys should be adjusting your lineup right up till uh, game time on Sunday. And we do as well. So we greatly, greatly encourage you to see our final lineup. Go to our website, fantasyfootballconsultants.net. And the big box in the middle of the homepage says Daily Fantasy Football Advice, DraftKings and FanDuel. Click on that. And not only will you see our, our lineup there at any point in time, but any changes to that lineup from the video will be disclosed and the reasons for those changes. Here's our suggestion. Make sure before you finalize your lineup right after inactives come out, visit the website, then that you'll know our lineup will be final because we, we make those final changes no later than about 45 minutes before kickoff. Okay, let's talk about our, our contest is now complete. We have all our qualifiers for our DraftKings contest. Uh, and we sent out emails to all those qualifiers. Unfortunately, there are two people. That is Sumter Remus and Rich Marte that I don't believe we have your correct DK username. So make sure you get that to us so we can get you into the uh, contest. Once you guys have received the email, be sure that you enter the league and then you enter week 11's contest. Now week 11 is a no payout week. It's just for practice, it's, uh, but it lets us check to make sure everything's working okay. When is the league actually start? Week 12 through week 15. The winner, the one who scores the most uh, in each of those week wins a cool $50. Now, if you wanna support our channel, you can do two quick things. Smash that like button and hit the red subscriber button if you haven't yet. And if you already are a subscriber, please consider uh, sharing our channel with your friends and league mates and see if they will be willing to subscribe. All right, we are done with our contest, but the YouTube comment section, what we ask that you do is after we're gonna show our cash and GPP lineup, 
Let us know if there's someone we didn't put in our lineup who you think should have been in our lineup. So explain, you would take this guy out and put this guy in. Just make sure it works from a salary perspective. Are this group of guys out and put these group of guys in. So without any further ado, let's go to the studio and reveal our week 11 cash and GPP lineups. All right, let's start with our cash game lineup. And as always, we're gonna start at running back. And the conversation always begins with Christian McCaffrey, who's at the very top, $10,500. Remember our NFL DFS Masterclass, the most important factor for running backs for cash games is touches. That's what tells you the opportunities they're getting. And in six of the last seven games, Christian McCaffrey has gotten 26, 27, 26, 25, 37, and 27 touches. That's absolutely incredible. But you say 10,500, Eric. Can you really pay 10,500? We did it last week and we're gonna do it again this week because it's not just that we're getting Christian McCaffrey. We're getting Christian McCaffrey in an outstanding matchup. He is at home. He is a favorite. He has an implied total of 28 points, and he faces an Atlanta defense that can't stop anybody unless they're playing in New Orleans, apparently. Um, So I do want to comment that Christian McCaffrey is absolutely made for DraftKings. DraftKings gives you a three-point bonus for getting over 100 yards. Now, if you take away the two Tampa Bay games, which Tampa Bay has an absolutely outstanding rush defense, he he has gotten to the bonus in six out of the seven games this year. And the one game that he didn't get it was the Houston game where he, he missed it by seven yards. Really love Christian McCaffrey. And we're seeing the effect of Kyle Allen. There's two things that are really good for Christian McCaffrey in relation to Kyle Allen. One is Kyle Allen is an accurate quarterback. He is improving each week and getting more and more comfortable in the role. But what separates Kyle Allen from his predecessor, Cam Newton, is Kyle Allen doesn't vulture one and two yard touchdowns away from Christian McCaffrey. So we will happily... Uh, take Christian McCaffrey and just look at the total remaining salary plummet. <laughs> but that's okay. Don't worry about it, folks. Uh, we're going to take a look at who do we want to pair Christian McCaffrey. You might say, what about Ezekiel Elliott? And I say, no, 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 no. Because I'd like to save $2,100 from Ezekiel Elliott, who I know is in a good matchup, but guess who else is in a good matchup? Up for $6,900 is Josh Jacobs. So Josh Jacobs, again, is playing at home. He is a huge favorite. Ten and a half points over those awful, winless Cincinnati Bengals. And he has a 30 implied total. Game script is completely in his favor. This uh, Cincinnati team has basically given up. Why do I say they've given up? Exhibit A, they're starting Ryan Finley. He's a rookie quarterback, and I get it. They just want to see what he can do. The season's lost, but that's what I mean about saying they're giving up. And uh, so uh, Exhibit B is, did you see the last game? 49-13, to they got crushed by the Ravens. We're down early. By two touchdowns, it didn't stop them. They just kept running the ball with Joe Mixon. He carried it 30 times. They just don't care. So uh, I am going to take Josh Jacobs. Now, boy, did I spend a lot of money at running back. I don't care. I'm still going to spend a lot of money at wide receiver because I'm looking at that Tampa Bay New Orleans game. Now, how do you attack New Orleans? Not on the ground. They do a great job on the ground. You attack them in the air. So my eyes are immediately drawn to Mike Evans, who has a sensational year so far. Now you say, oh, wait a minute, Eric. Here we go again. Is this going to be a Mike Evans game or is this going to be a Chris Godwin game? And look, look at the games that Mike Evans has gone off against Seattle, against Tennessee, against Carolina to a lesser extent. Usually it's when 
the opposing team does not have a shutdown corner. He faces New Orleans this week. And you look at what he did last time. <laughs> Zero catches, <laughs> zero yards. He was completely shut down by Marshawn Latimer. So you, you might say, well, why the heck are we starting him this week? Well, Marshawn Latimer, as I am filming, looks like he will not play. If we're wrong and it turns out he is active for the game, no worries. Slide Mike Evans out and put in Chris Godwin, who's only $100 cheaper. Where do we go from here? We're going to have to save some money, so we're going to scroll down a long way, all the way down to 4500 in D.D. Westbrook. So let's refresh our memory of what was going on with D.D. Westbrook. From week five to week seven, he was doing great, getting nine targets a game. And then very early in week eight in that Jet game, he hurt his neck. And he was out for week eight. He was out for week nine. And then the Jaguars had a bye in week 10. He has already been said it looks like he is a go. Coach Doug Moran relayed that he has the expectations that he would play. You know who else is going to play on that Jaguar team? Nick Foles is back. Now, I don't know if you remember back in the preseason, there was a ton of hype about how well Nick Foles Foles and D.D. Westbrook has been gelling. They've gotten the bye to hopefully get that uh, relationship back. So I am going to snap up D.D. Westbrook at a criminally low price of $4,500. Now I say if that's criminally low, well, if D.D. Westbrook is a bargain at $4,500, I don't know what Russell Gage is at 3300 Now, if you don't follow the NFL too closely, you might say, who? <laughs> don't say that. I'll explain who. Russell Gage. Russell Gage. Here is the deal with Russell Gage. He was on the bench for most of the year. But starting in week eight, when the Atlanta Falcons traded Mohamed Sanu over to New Orleans, he became the number three wide receiver on the Falcons. See, as you can see, the last two weeks, he's, t he's parlayed that into an average of seven targets. That would be pretty good, especially at a $3,300 price. But the news is even better for Russell Gage. The Atlanta Falcons are really hurting now in the passing game. Austin Hooper, a huge target in their passing game. Looks like he's not going to play. Devontae Freeman, a huge uh, target out of the backfield. It looks like he's not going to play. So, as Montgomery was with, Burns would say, If you can take advantage of a situation in some way, it's your duty as an American to do it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. At only $3,300, we will take advantage of the injuries that the Falcons have and snap up Russell uh, Gage. Now, where are we going to turn at tight end? So, I would love to have uh, Darren Waller uh, playing in Oakland against that bad Bengal defense at 5500 But honestly, I can't afford him. So, we're going to scroll down to $3,300 and snap up O.J. Howard. I'm sorry, $3,600. He was $3,300 last week. He's gone up a little bit. The thing about O.J. Howard that you really like this week is he's facing New Orleans. First of all, he's at home. You like that in tight ends. usually perform better at home. And he is facing the New Orleans Saints, who I already talked about. You attack in the air, not on the ground. Since he's come back from injury, he got seven targets last week. They have him running more routes. So it... $3,600, we're going to snap up uh, O.J. Howard. Now, based on the savings that I got out of Russell Gage, O.J. Howard, and who I will get a savings out of my flex, I can go over to quarterback. And what we say in our NFL DFS master class is, generally we pay down at wide receiver. But if you can find value elsewhere, you can pay up. In other words, paying up at 
a quarterback is a luxury, not a necessity. We can take advantage of this luxury and pay all the way up for Lamar Jackson. This guy is absolutely incredible, folks. He he has averaged this year 78 yards per game rushing the ball. He's a quarterback. Running backs would kill to, to, to have that. Now, we love the matchup this week. Why? Look at last week. Last week was great. He just tore apart the Bengals, 33 uh, points, uh, da- draft king points. But guess what? He could have done a lot better if he just was allowed to play the whole game. He was pulled early because they were so far ahead. I don't think that will happen this week with the Houston Texans and Deshaun Watson. I think we got a great game script where we got a 50 over and under. So it's a very high total. Baltimore's implied total is 27. Lamar Jackson's a home favorite. Houston doesn't do a good job against the pass. They're 26 against quarterbacks. Everything is lining up for Lamar Jackson to have a big game. So I am going to let my friend George Bush give the news to Lamar Jackson. I, I, I want you to be on my team. So we're going to add Lamar Jackson to our lineup. Now we move on to the flex. I promised you that there was going to be a bargain. And there's really two guys who stand out as great bargains this, this week on DraftKings. Both free square running backs, which we're taking advantage because the starter is not playing. Brian Hill on the Atlanta Falcons because it doesn't look like Devontae Freeman will play. And J.D. McKissick uh, on the Detroit Lions because not only does it look like Ty Johnson's not going to play, but the other Johnson and Johnson and Johnson, carry on Johnson, is definitely out. Now, which guy do I want to go with? I think most people are picking Brian uh, Hill. Not what I am going to do for two reasons. One... Brian Hill is $4,800, and J.D. McKissick is $4,600. I need that extra $200. And the second reason is game script. So as you can see, both Brian Hill and J.D. McKissick are playing good matchups where the other team has done a bad job against running backs, 29th. Uh, Carolina is 29th against running backs and Dallas is 26th. The problem is, what if the game script changes? What if, because they're both underdogs, what if Dallas and Carolina get way up on Atlanta and Detroit, which I think is likely? I'm really worried about Brian Hill being game scripted out. It's not going to happen with J.D. McKissick. J.D. McKissick excels in the passing game. Remember, we're on DraftKings where we get a full point per reception. So I am going to dial up uh, J.D. McKissick in our lineup. The last, the very last position is defense. And I am going to let you guess what defense we are going to uh, select for this lineup. We only got one choice, folks. It's the Arizona Cardinals. They're the only ones that we can afford. Now, we obviously plan this. So at $1,500, there's no getting around the fact that the Arizona Cardinals are a punt. They are drastically underpriced, in my opinion. I can't believe they're the cheapest defense. I mean, they're, they're cheaper than the Lions and the Bengals? And then they're $800 cheaper than everybody else? So I'm happy to get Arizona at their price. But there is some positives about Arizona. They're facing the San Francisco 49ers. They're coming off a short week playing on Monday night. A Monday night game in which it went to overtime. Great game, by the way. I'm a Seahawks fan, so I really enjoyed it. But the Niners are pretty banged up after that game with the Seahawks. It's a possibility that Matt Breida will not play. It's a possibility that Emmanuel Sanders will not play. It's a possibility that George Kittle will not play. So 
Arizona can really get a good matchup where they, uh, ha- you know, it's still going to be a tough matchup because the Niners are a really good team, but they're getting the Niners when they're banged up. I would also add that the Arizona Cardinals do put pressure on the quarterback. They get 2.7 sacks per game. That's good for 12th in the NFL. And if you can put pressure on Garoppolo, good things could happen. That's what happened last week against the Seahawks. They had five sacks on Garoppolo. He threw one interception, but let's be honest, folks. He could have thrown five interceptions. There were many throws where the Seahawks really, to be honest, should have intercepted, but they weren't able to. So, as a punt play, I'm excited about the Cardinals. So, what is our cash game lineup? We have Lamar Jackson at quarterback, Christian McCaffrey and Josh Jacobs at running back, as well as the flex running back, J.D. McKissick. At wide receiver, it's Evans, Westbrook, and Gage. O.J. Howard is at tight end, and the Arizona defense. So, we will now switch to GPP. So, let's talk about our GPP lineup. We always like to start GPP with a stack, and we're actually doing going with a three-player stack in one game. On the Carolina side, we have Kyle Allen throwing to DJ Moore. Kyle Allen and DJ Moore absolutely have developed a connection. DJ Moore has received 10, an average of 10 targets over the last four weeks. And going the other way, we already have talked about Russell Gage and, and, and his ability. What I love about this stack is obviously it comes from a game which uh, they have a high implied total, Carolina, 28. But I love the fact that it's a cheap stack at only 14,500. It leaves us room to to spend elsewhere. And where we spent it, of course, was at running back. Once again, Josh Jacobs, we love at 6,900. High floor, but also a high ceiling going against Cincinnati, where the game script could be that Oakland's ahead throughout the game and they keep pounding the ball with Josh Jacobs. The other running back we're going to pick is Tevin Coleman, but it's conditioned on the fact that Matt Breida does not play. If Matt Breida doesn't play, Tevin Coleman has the backfield all to himself, and he has an implied total, team total of 28.5. He's at home. He, there are huge favorites over the Arizona Cardinals. Love this opportunity for Tevin Coleman at only $6,100. Expect them also, again, to get up on Arizona. So we will snap up Coleman and GPP. At wide receiver, we're going to go Chris Godwin. Remember what we talked about before? Marshawn Latimer plays. It's a great Great play because he'll be on Mike Evans. But even if he doesn't play, we like Chris Godwin to have a a good game against New Orleans. But you can always switch over to Mike Evans, but you're going to have to find $100 elsewhere. One option is to drop from the Vikings defense down to the Raiders uh, defense. Let's talk a little bit about the other small stack that we have in GPP. We've got Dalvin Cook and the Minnesota Vikings. We call that a stack because in a game where you expect one team to trounce the other team, and we do with Minnesota trouncing Denver, then game script would dictate that the defense is going to have a good game because Denver will be able to force to try to throw the ball from behind, and Minnesota offense will just keep running the ball as they stay in the lead. And man, I think an f- important factor is that Adam Thielen is still considered questionable. Uh, last week he didn't play. What did Minnesota do? They just turned the ball over to Dalvin Cook. He had 33 touches, ladies and gentlemen, last week against Denver. Dalvin Cook did. So I love this, this stack. And remember, Denver does not have Joe Flacco. Instead, they are using a uh, rookie, Brandon Allen. They do not have wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders. He's in San Francisco. So they don't have the weapons they had when they started the season. I think this Viking defense can really feast on them in a really hostile territory with Minnesota being in the dome. All right, let's wrap up uh, the lineup with our tight end, Ryan Griffin. Ryan Griffin is playing for the New York Jets. 
he takes over his the spot for Chris Herndon again. Chris Herndon has barely played. Up until last week he played, and then he got hurt again. So it's now Ryan Griffin's job again. And although Washington has a good defense, they don't have a good offense at all. So the the Jets should have no trouble keeping the ball for most of the game. So at only 2,900, I think Ryan Griffin is a wonderful play uh, for GPP. So our GPP lineup is Kyle Allen at quarterback, Josh Jacobs, Tevin Coleman, and Dalvin Cook as the running backs. The wide receivers are Goodwin, Moore, and Gage. The defense is the Minnesota Vikings defense. I want to remind everybody, if you enjoyed the show and you enjoy our ch- want to support our channel, please, please hit that red subscriber button as well as smash the like button. When you watch these videos, they're great. I hope you enjoy them. But even these videos are not nearly as valuable as our NFL DFS Masterclass. And in that NFL DFS Masterclass, we have three playlists where we will take you either from the beginning class in one playlist or what we'll do is we'll start you with picking your own contest or we'll get you right into the strategy uh, sessions. That is how to pick the right quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defense for both cash games and GPP. All of those playlists are up on the screen. I want to thank you very much for joining us and we'll look forward to seeing you for the preview of week 12, all coming up next week. And until then, we'll see you next week. Just when you think this show is terrible, something wonderful happens. What? It ends.